found my perfect sound. Can you see the fire in my eyes? Bitches burning now. Lightning in a bottle. I think I just found my perfect sound. Can you see the fire in my eyes? Bitches burning now. Ed. Yo. Yo, what yo. Do you do? How you living? How you feeling? How you doing? I thought we were strapped what do you do? this intro. That's a good fucking point. What do you do when you see a bear, Ed? Run! That works too. You stay away. You stay away. Hey, bear. Stay away. You're going to stay away from these players, or else we're going to send a bear to your house. In the form of Brandon. No, in the form of an actual bear. Right. Brandon I'm not growl. sure how bear like I am. Growl. Let's bear. see your growl. Let's see your growl. Please. Good, Brandon, let me see your machete growl. fingers. God. Right. <laughs> machete fingers? That's that's uh, I I left them in the closet. See, the bear would have yeah, I love a bear. second life as a bear. All right. Aside from your uh, weird fetish, <laughs> what else uh, what else we got here? Uh well today we're gonna talk about players that you should just not talk not target, not touch. None of the above on these certain players. Uh, three players each. By the way, this is first choice fantasy. In case you, the green shirt I might throw you off because this is not first choice betting. It's fantasy. It, We're talking about fantasy. You probably noticed when you clicked on the YouTube link. If you did, you may it. have the colors. The colors are a little. You got. You got to think about it. The green for first choice betting is like you get the green. First choice fantasy. It's blue. So you're in a fantasy world. You stay Neptune. Liquid, bro. Neptune, fantasy That's world. Nice. Ooh, all right. Uh, you're going down, we... the, down the toilet here. Yeah, <laughs> talk about some players. Let's That's get angry. We're all Who's going first? Flushed down. Uh, Who's got Alex. a shitty ADP? I'm going first. Okay. Um, Joe Mixon, RB13, 20th overall. We pulled these. Uh, this is half point PPR from uh, Fantasy Pros, and uh, it kind of changes depending on like you know what's going on at the time. So if Joe Mixon is the RB like 14. When you read these instead of 13, I don't care. He was 13 when I saw it. And that is way too freaking high, man. Whose idea was that? Why is he going above Dobbins? That's it. That's that, like that's all you need to the argument. Yeah. Does anyone have a rational explanation for that? Because I don't. Crickets. Well, actually, people might argue the Calvin receptions. I, you know what? What about the whole being on the field thing? Because he hasn't done a whole lot of that. He's had like a few solid stretches. And yeah, he's a talented back. And he's good when he's healthy, but he's not always healthy. And that offensive line is still a disaster. Like Cincinnati basically just did nothing to address it. Like, oh, the Bengals are built yeah, around the passing game. The, the Baltimore, they're built around the run game. And Mark Ingram was fucking successful as hell on the back half of his freaking run. Go ahead, Brandon. Go off. Go off. Did well, you mean, that, did well, you that would just be, yeah, well, I'm saying Mark Ingram, when he got traded or signed, traded, whatever, what? when he got there, with the Ravens, he was a legitimate fantasy star. Everyone wanted him. And then two years later, he's beat, he's cut, and now J.K. Dobbins is there, and he's fresh, looking good, solid, and he's behind Joe Mixon. Was not solid, taking Joe Mixon. Yeah. It's the RB13. Yeah. 20th overall pick? Not doing average, it. Maybe, maybe? Absolutely not doing it. Not not solid. Absolutely, they're not solid good. and not solid. And Joe Mixon, not solid. at this ADP, not solid. Solid. All right. Okay, Brandon, he's liquid or gaseous. He's liquid. Might be gassy. He's gas. Oh, he's. You were up next, Brandon. We gas going is more dangerous. Order. I feel like gas can, has a boom, like chance of boom. No bust. He, it he just, has just it is, chance yeah, of stream. Like just he's just a stream. Um. Yeah. So mine. <laughs> Well, he's a guy that Alex and I both very much dislike. Odell Beckham Jr. He's getting drafted ab- above Chase Claypool. Like I, I don't personally, I don't get that. He's getting drafted one player behind Jamar Chase. I just, I don't. I'm not a believer in Odell anymore. He just has had too many seasons of like inefficiency and not very solid play and. Not to just draft all. them to draft them around these young talented receivers that I feel like I feel like Chase Claypool, T. Higgins, I feel like those two guys, even Jamar Chase has like a floor or like they have a safer floor than what Odo about Odell Beckham Jr. has. 
And, and yeah, so, Odell Beckham Jr. may have those blow-up games, but that's all he's got. And when are you going to have him in your lineup with that? He's just a he's just a fantasy blocker. He's just he just sits in your your lineup like a weight and just weighs down your bench, weighs down your flex when you finally choose to put him in. And then you realize that's not the right game. It's two weeks from then. And then you think, oh, Odell Beckham, he looks fantastic. And then you put him back in, and then he doesn't do anything. And then you're just hurt more. He misses so, the rest of the season. Yes. Well, that would be a benefit. Then you know not to play him. Then you know you can pick up someone else and hope for the best. Ed is here. You. <laughs> I don't like this, Brandon. I just don't. I don't like this well, take. I know I'm not. I agree. His ADP is too high. If you're taking him over T. Higgins, you can just get out. I, I, I'm taking him over Jamar Chase. That's for sure. Um, over Juju Smith Schultz. I feel like those two players are kind of similar. Not at all. The, no. Really? No, Juju is really. I feel like really they're bad. similar. Uh-huh. Alex, are they not similar? Like Juju is like I don't. Th- I think Juju is more of like a possession slot guy, and Odell is still Boom. more of a big play threat. But those big plays happen about twice a season. So, well, let's be so fair. Let's think about it this way. Insane. Let's think about it. Uh, let's think about it this way. Ready for it? So last year he played seven. It was six games, and he played like a few snaps in the seventh game. Got hurt, right? Uh, that was his second season in in Cleveland. His first season, you know how bad the Browns were overall, right? Coaching was terrible. Baker Mayfield was terrible. Everything was terrible that first year. So, yeah, Odell was pretty bad that first year as well. You go back a year, he finished as a wider, top 15 wide receiver. Go back one year, he finished top 15 wide receiver. The three first years or four first years, however long it was, when he was in the NFL, you've seen his ceiling. Like, you've seen what he's actually – actually. Yeah, but he's not that guy anymore. No. You're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reinforcing my claim. <laughs> no, no, no. You're no. no you're so not that guy. Damn we it. actually we've seen it from Odell. Just because he hasn't done it in the past three years, two of the two or three years, no. Two of the yeah, two or three years he's been hurt. Yeah. Well, that's a concern. <laughs> Is it? I don't know if it's a concern. That's I don't a know if it's damn concern. Good concern to have. <laughs> Aren't you we'll the same about guy this who way. won't draft Dalvin Cook because he got hurt in the past? No, no, no. Dalvin Cook is just one of those guys that I just. I drafted him actually this year, but it's just one of those guys that like uh, I don't know. He's gross to me. But this is this is my point. Ready for it? Two of the past three years, he's been hurt. In the one year that he didn't perform up to par, he was in a terrible offense, terrible everything. But before that, like wipe that slate clean. Think about it this way: you've seen him play, and when he plays, he's a top. He's a, <laughs> he's a top fifteen wide receiver, top ten wide receiver. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. <laughs> We will see. We will see how this year goes. You Would you take him over Jamar Chase? For this year, I don't know, dude, because I'm just worried he's going to miss half the season. But who, I, Jamar Chase or? No, o- Odell. I think Chase, I, I think all of the early, like, all the concerns are to me way overblown. But I do think it could take the man, like, some time to acclimate. I mean, he just took a season off. Yeah, but, like, fair. I feel yeah. like he could – like he could have a, he could be one of those rookies that like closes very well I, mean, I feel like that's going to provide me more utility than Odell will in the latter half of the season I disagree man I like Odell a lot this year I, this is the thing I, I did my own rankings right and I have Odell at 27 so it's not like I'm exceptionally loving him over the actual ADP but I'm taking him at the value that he is just because I think yeah why not and I do have Higgins above him. I have Claypool above him. I like those two wide receivers a lot more, but still like Odell as a wide receiver three. I mean, I'm fine on him as a three. And I mean, this has him as like a high end three. I just, I, I do agree with Brandon. Some of these names below him are not okay. But I guess I would agree on that part as well. Claypool should not be below him. Higgins shouldn't be below him. But Chase, uh, I think so. I just had to come to bat for my guy Odell because you guys both hate the man very heavily. I don't hate yeah. the man. I have nothing against Odell. I hate his fantasy. It's just fantasy character. I think Brandon hates him. That's Brandon it. said it would be a good thing if he got hurt. So. No. <laughs> that, that sounds like, no, for, that sounds again, like hating fantasy. Something. Fantasy character. The player, I don't I don't mind Odell. Ed, who do you hate? 
Dude, why I hate Kenny Galladay, but he's not on one of these. Oh, yeah. He should have been actually thinking about it. It's gonna be an honorable mention. I'm just gonna drop that in there. Kenny Galladay should not be being drafted at 25 in front of Higgins, Ayuk, Claypool, et cetera, et cetera. But my number one is another wide receiver that is a big, big boy, right? And he, he caught touchdowns at an insane rate last year. I think he had like 13 touchdowns, something like that. And he still finished like nothing exceptional. It was good. His finish, I don't remember what it was. I think it was like 15, 11th. maybe something like that. Was it 11? Oh, it's good. Man, check. I have no clue. But uh, Mike Evans is the man that I'm speaking of, in case I didn't already say that. I may have already said that, but I don't know, man. Oh, I just 11th. Yeah. Uh, fuck that man. But Mike Evans, I just don't, I don't know. Every single year, he has the hype. He has the big games. He has the bad games. You know what I mean? And like, who's he getting drafted? Jekyll but I, and Hyde as they come. And I'm not feeling that as my number one receiver. Even as a what? Even as a two. Because at that point you're kind I mean, of this, for... he's wide receiver 13 here. It's a high end, yeah. Know, that's practically yeah. one. It's a high end, too. Wow. In terms of guys receiver coming off the board. 13, are you serious? Do you not well, like that or what do you like that? I don't like that. You don't Brandon like that. It. Brandon mm-hmm. appears to be upset at it. No, I don't. Like, yeah, no, not digging that. Yeah, they have a lot of uh, weapons in Tampa Bay, and then they added Gio Bernard, which obviously, oh, Gio Bernard, where the fuck is that guy? He's Luigi, but he's Mario, if you think about it, because it's going to be a main target of Tom Brady, as you've seen in the previous years. You know, the running backs get a lot of targets, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, you have a lot of weapons there. Uh, the offense as a whole is obviously going to put up points. You know that. Mike Evans was the main uh, contributor to the points of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last year. But uh, that thing could easily shift because Chris Godwin missed the majority of the season. Am I wrong? I think he like broke his pinky or some crazy shit. But did when he? he when he's on the field, he's yeah. he did he something. Did miss a large portion of the year. And uh, you know Gronk is obviously still there. You got Gronk. OJ Howard's back. Uh, you got Gio Bernard there. And uh, you got a lot of guys that can siphon off like five touchdowns. And all of then all of a sudden, like Evans is like wide receiver three. Yeah, exactly. That's. Pretty much what I'm saying. Alex is better with English. Or he'll just catch 14 touchdowns next year and this is the wide receiver seven, and everyone will hate themselves. Or he catches 13 touchdowns next year and still finishes as a wide receiver 18 on the back of a Hall of Fame or a uh, world record. Only gets season. points off of touchdowns. <laughs> Every single yeah. catch is a touchdown. Four, 400 yards receiving and 1,400 or 14 touchdowns. 1,400 touchdowns would be absurd too, but you know. Love it. That's I hard. don't like the area. Mike I don't even Evans, like the player either. Yeah. Mike Evans, he's had he had his least amount of targets ever last season. And all, that's year one with Tom Brady. So maybe you could expect it to go up. But then again, the touchdowns I don't see going up. I can see it regressing. And the players behind Mike Evans, like Ed pointed out. I don't think he emphasized it enough. There's some really solid wide receivers behind him that I would prefer over Evans just for an upside standpoint. You take Brown over Evans? At value, I would. I like Brown's value more, but I don't obviously, in a, it, you know, definitely would not take him straight up. Super right here. Brown? Ah. I think we can agree on this. I'm just one. drawing a blank on who, what Brown? AB. Antonio. Antonio Brown. Oh, oh, I completely oh. forgot about him too. Honestly, so you said receivers. Like Godwin is one thing, but that the list quickly runs dry after that in terms of dudes you take over yeah. in the fact. Tyler Johnson. We're talking specifically about him, but yeah. I mean, I'd probably rather draft Tyler Johnson his ADP than Evans is because I like the guy I could get some better. Yeah. His axe. I, I like Chris Godwin. Though. I mean. No, I just think Mike Evans is ADP is awfully high compared to like some of the dudes that are coming behind him. Although he's lit up the league past three years, he's been top top ten uh, in standard leagues. It's coming. But, Reckoning is coming. The cliff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're gonna go to another guy who's lit up the league. Ooh. Many times, but I don't like the price tag. Julio Jones, 42, wide receiver 15. I don't like it. It's pretty high. I yeah. Don't, I don't like it. I, gee, I, I don't like it. I get it. It's Julio. If he's on the field, it's going to be good. But, like, I don't know how confident of that I am. And, like, 
if I'm picking someone up there, I feel like he's he's sitting around like Robert Woods and like Chris Godwin and like pretty like a few spots ahead of like the Cooper Cup and Deontay Johnson's. Like, you know, you go a little further, you got the IUs, and I just feel like some of those dudes yeah. just feel safer to me. He's two I know names Julio's behind Julio, Mike but... Evans. So everything yeah. we were saying about Evans times Supplies. that by like yeah. three because Julio Jones is four years older. And he's much I'm not really injured. worried about Evans getting hurt, but like Julio, I feel like that Julio has that is injury coming a concern. Yeah. And then like I see, like that's that's kind of almost like my primary concern. I don't know I don't know if that offense could sustain two top 15 receivers, but Julio's good enough that if he played all 16 games, I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah. Because like yeah. he could probably just take six targets a game for like 80 yards in the touch. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, I mean, he's he's got to be relevant, but, but only my, the question my point is, is that way I, too high or not. He's I, too high. I, I will take someone else at that spot. Sorry, Julio, but I just can't do it. Yeah, yeah I would agree. I would tend to agree because of, I don't know the passing volume that often. I'd rather have Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper is right below. I w- to me, I they're w- both – they're very talented. Like, well, I – I don't know. Trying to call Cooper a one or a two is to me just a waste of time. But they're both very talented. They have some injury concerns, but Cooper, I feel like, is going to get a hell of a lot more volume, even if he's not as good. Thanks. Yeah. True. 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 All right. Well, we're on to my number two. That's Chase Edmonds. Just got bounce his big old Ten. ego down. Like ego. everyone's ego yeah, has to get bounced, ripped on, put it down, bring it like right. You got a thing with the number 26. Odell is wide receiver, yeah. 26. Odell's Edmonds, wide receiver 26. Edmonds is running back 26, and Granite's picking a fight with him. But it's crazy. Like, I understand the opportunity is there, but is it? I mean, I know. I think there's going to be a rookie who's going to cut in a, into his workload next season. And you oh, may be shit. asking yourself, yourself, who the fuck? There is no rookie running back. Yeah, you're right. There's not. That's how bad I think Chase Edmonds is. <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> think he's bad. I just don't think he can carry a three-down you know, role or been be – lighting up the preseason. I don't think he's going to be effective in a role with limited carries. Just – I. It's just not that type of back, and I don't think James Conner can also carry that load. And at one point, I was kind of high on Conner, and I still am because I feel like Conner – He's going to get goal line touches. He's low on give... the ADP, so it's yeah. like, do I go Chase or Conner? I'd rather take the bet on Conner than Chase, in my opinion. And then, like, guys behind him is like Raheem Mostert. I wouldn't take him. He's actually – gonna be mentioned (laughs) so just but behind him it's basically all centered around ronald jones ronald jones is below both raheem moster and chase edmonds i'm just gonna say raheem moster is my my last one while we're at while we're on that subject exactly because it's just ronald jones is behind them and i think that's just i and I even think Damian Harris might even have a better season. I would take Damian them. Harris over those days. So no question. Names Michael Carter. I'm just scrolling down like Leonard Fournette. Okay, well, that's Trey the, Sermon. That's Trey gonna Sermon. get it fired up. Oh, look at that. Oh, we peaked yeah. his attention. <laughs> like I don't. I like all those names. Like I feel like beat. Zach Moss is where they start to settle down. Like. Running back 35, that's the range those two dudes need to go. Like, come on. That's all I got to say about. Do you want to hear another running back whose freaking selection right now is just off the walls bonkers right now? Yeah. Off the walls. Some dude off who got walls. labeled as a running back within a running back committee who didn't even get the first team reps whenever in the preseason game. Malcolm Brown took them all. Miles Gaskin's been taken as a running back 21. Let that sink in for a second. That offensive line is dookie. Miles Gaskin was hurt the majority of last season. And when he wasn't, he was doing cool. Yeah, that's cool. But the reason why he was doing cool was because he was getting a lot of carries, and a lot of touches. He was being used as a workhorse. They immediately came out and said it's going to be a committee. That's warning number one. Number two is preseason games where Malcolm Brown got all the 
third down work or something like that and the goal line touchdown. I don't know. But Although he didn't even look good. Didn't look good. Ahmed looked <laughs> good, though. Okay, yeah, he probably looked good against the fourth stringers. Uh, he's a sleeper, dude. Nah. He's my man. I'm Bro, being there's serious. A reason, I think I'm starting to come up on There is a reason all the fourth quarter guys do better than the first quarter guys. I don't know. Because he's I think, going against the guy that's also not going to make the roster. He did good last season. But the, anyway, like c- keep going. Get on, I'm just proving your point through my Ahmed love. <clears throat> Well, uh, he's going in the fourth round. I think that should be enough to actually write the conversation yeah, off. Miles Gaskin tough. in the fourth round will never be a good pick. I don't – yeah, I, I don't – Holy! I don't see how, like, he's not – I don't think he's talented enough to sustain any sort of consistent points with very limited touches. And I don't think he's not getting, like, 25 touches a game oh next year. Oh, my God. And, like, hoping that he gets <laughs> 20 touches a game is, like, a, a little dramatic. That's crazy. Miles Gaskin is being drafted above Kareem Hunt. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's just bizarre to me. Like Miles Gaskin wasn't my, very my thing great is that last season, and like is he's like all right. Where Mike Davis is the RB twenty four, so like he's a little chunk behind Gaskin, and those two feel like similar players to me, in which yeah. they overachieved last year. And they got like they might have earned their way into some more, but like the Falcons do not have a lot behind Mike Davis, and, who they cut. And as Ed said, the Dolphins, like the coach, basically was Devontae like, "Yeah, he's not Foreman. getting that role." Yeah, and the fact that you know, ah, uh, that's just it's, the offensive line is bad too, like. I don't get it. I just don't get it. 21. 21. He's going to finish as a running back, too. That's what they're saying, pretty much, is what it is. I think, bro, you can get Ronald Jones down at RB29. You can get Javante Williams, I believe, after that. Probably. I can't go over the Ronald Jones hate. Like, like, it's so bizarre. Jones should be up there where, like, Gaskin should be. He's so far back. He doesn't. I don't get that. My, my funny, the funny part is looking at this ADP stuff and seeing like Gaskin's forty nine, and like he's like tied with Cooper Cup, and I'm just imagining someone hovering over those two names, being like Miles Gaskin. Yeah, Miles Gaskin, <laughs> Cooper Cup. Even if you had no yeah. running backs, yeah, the, the whole the still whole. Be like, okay, I'm still gonna take Cup. The Rams wide receivers. I don't get it. I don't understand why people aren't higher on them. I feel like they should be – people should be, like, drooling over these dudes. And like, I mean, this has Cooper Cup as the wide receiver 18 and Robert Woods as the wide receiver 16. So. I feel like that's, like, the average place where they always are. Yeah, yeah, that's, like, their, their – Woods is a little higher. And I think they're, like, wide little receiver little. two, these two. Well, it's just going to depend which one of them catches touchdowns. I mean, Cooper Cup was six the year prior. He just caught less touchdowns this season, and Robert Woods caught less. And what do you see? Like, it's flip-flop, and now Woods is on top. Like, this year, Cup's going to catch ten touchdowns, and he'll finish as the one, and Woods will finish as the, mid, mid, like, mid-tier two. All right. Uh, I guess it's my turn again. All right, this is going to be Dak Prescott, fifth QB. I don't care about the overall number. This that's just where my issue lies as the QB five. Not he's obviously capable of it. Like, not trying to suggest that he isn't, but if I'm paying for that top five quarterback price, I would much rather a guy I I know is fully functioning. Now, and I feel like there's been a lot of vagueness going on with like Dak and his arm and whatnot. And I don't want to be drafting anyone that's compromised as my QB5 when I could get, according to this ADP data, like Russell Wilson or like Justin Herbert or Aaron Rodgers a round or two later, where I could wait a few rounds and get like a Stafford or a Tannehill or a Burrow, or I could wait a few more rounds and get any of the rookies. Yeah. And like, I mean, sure, there's less certainty, but I, I don't QB5 is too high for me for a guy that I don't know if he's fully healthy or not. Yeah. I was thinking about doing him, and then I seen he was on your list. I was like, yeah. 
it's not worth the risk to me. I respect the quarterback it. pick, though. Yeah. Quarterback on there. That's too high. Brady also seems like a little too high, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I think beginning of the season, not beginning of the beginning of like the off season. Oh, like, where was he like last year? Just the amount of touchdowns he had last year was pretty. Absurd. Yeah, I, yeah, he had a lot. I just. Yeah. I, I'd probably rather take some of the other guys. It's always nice picking up a rushing quarterback because then like, you can hope that they don't age you. But whatever. That's that's really got like I don't deck. I don't know if he's healthy, so that's not not cool. Uh, and it's not just the ankle too. So yeah, I mean I don't know. Like, does that hurt his rushing upside at all? Is he going to be hesitant? Is he? Does his arm work? Like, there's a lot. That's that's what worries me more than the ankle. Like, if they say the ankle's clean, like, cool, whatever. Like, I would trust him. But your shoulder is a very vital part of throwing the ball. So, like, if that's not fully functioning, that concerns me. Yeah. And I think we're back to you. Me? Oh, yeah. Brandon double-dipped. Yeah, well, at this point in the video, I'm sure nobody's watching. And if they are, uh, they – don't really care about this one, but it's going to be somebody who's taken as a lottery ticket who I have no respect for. And I just, <laughs> dude, don't. you're picking up a lottery ticket and it's already scratched off, and you can tell they didn't win. Oh, that's it's just that's laying a on good the ground, and people are just picking it up. And they're like, well, no, you paid it's money, a lottery ticket. <laughs> even if it was a dollar. Hey, bro, I'll give well, you a dollar. For that time to reach, you're ticket. taking the time to reach down into the gunk and get your fingers dirty like you gotta wash your hands after that like that's i think we said the name yet yeah, but the only reason i don't like ty hilton as a lottery ticket is because of the guy throwing up the ball but that should be clear about it. <laughs> i don't even i mean i i'm fine with the guy throwing the ball i think it's the uh the the, the michael old. Pittman and the oldness <laughs> yeah the oldness of it. <laughs> it is the michael Pittman young. impediment uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Michael Pitt, Michael Pittman's good. T.Y. Hilton's not, and I think I think he's being drafted like relatively close. And T.Y. Hilton uh, is just really bad and old and injured. And I've had him a couple times fantasy the past couple of years, and he's kind of been that landmine type of play. And it's like, don't know if I want that or if I need that. I don't think you guys need that. Um, yeah, he, he's he's dead pretty much. He's yeah, a scratch off, like Brandon said, who's already been scratched yeah. off. Sometimes we need that reminder. Just like the reminder to like, comment, share, subscribe, do it all. You know, what's the harm? We aren't an already scratched off lottery ticket. We're a, we're fresh out of the machine. Yeah, you're right. I'm not all. giving you money. <laughs> <laughs> None of that. So, do it all. And I think that's about it. That's a wrap, boys. It is. It is. Right. When uh, what do we got? What do we got next episode? Thinking of which we have. I don't know what order these are going to be released in? There's going to be more ADP stuff. It's going to be I'd some say, draft stuff. Yeah. All right. So, what is the next episode? Then it's going to be the players that you want to touch, pretty much. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> sure. Um, All right. And we should you should have you should see that in two days, and then two days after that we'll be doing an episode about uh what's the, what's the last episode? That's the rookies. The rookies, yeah, we're updating our rookie rankings pretty much. Um, reaction to the Travis Etienne news that just came out today, which is sad for Brandon. Uh, sad for Travis Etienne as well. For Good for James Robinson, I guess, and uh, sad for. I was gonna say sad for Urban Meyer, but he's probably gonna lose his job before the guy comes. Back anyway, he so loses his finished. job but, uh, before the season starts. Yeah, right. We're headed. I wouldn't be shocked if he's out next week. Who knows? Yeah, oh, I know who's out right now. That's first choice fantasy. Deuces right. later.